This is the machine I built to keep two disobedient cats at bay. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I finished the design, how it works, and we'll see it in action. As promised, I have shared the 3D files on my Thingiverse profile. But before starting, I recommend watching the first part if you haven't done so yet. The first thing was to disconnect everything and design a new PCB. Unfortunately, I realized late that my old design wasn't enough to do what I wanted to do. So I had to start from scratch and order another one. The first big change was to replace the previous drivers with ones capable of interpreting commands using SPI. These have a great advantage, and that is that they manage the movement of the motor they control by themselves. In simple terms, you tell them what you want the motor to do, and they create the appropriate electrical signal to achieve it. This means that movement control at the programming level is somewhat simpler. On the other hand, I also got rid of the Raspberry Pi Zero. All of these changes caused the PCB design to change completely. I used large components again and soldered the board with my homemade hot plate machine. After correcting some bridges, I set out to reduce my anxiety levels by trying to straighten some components. As I mentioned before, I was overly optimistic when I chose the Raspberry Pi Zero for this project. I soon realized that I needed a lot more power to use OpenCV in real time, so I replaced it with the most powerful Raspberry Pi model available. Still. Real-time image recognition is CPU-intensive, so I had to install a fan to control its temperature. Ok, moving on to the water system. After looking for containers to store pressurized water, I finally decided on this soda stream bottle. The bad thing is that this edge bothered me to attach the tube, and on top of that, the thread pattern of the cap is proprietary, so I decided to measure it, design an adapter, and send it to PCBWay to manufacture it with resistant resin. I reused the silicone gasket from the original cap. I added a pressure gauge to check that the pressure was always more or less the same. And that's pretty much it. If you look closely, the area where the gasket rests is not completely smooth, and that could cause a leak. Taking advantage of the fact that I have a laser router, I made this small tool to sand it and eliminate the layer marks. Before filling the bottle with water, I filled it with only pressurized air and immersed it in water to check for leaks. As you can see, no bubbles came out. I needed something to hold the bottle, so I made a holder using a military-grade broom handle and a 3D printed anchor system. The head required a lot of work at the design level, since, as I showed in the first video, it only had the valve attached. I had to find a place to put the camera module and laser pointer. 
All this, as always, trying to make the result as clean as possible. After testing that everything fit, I got ready to place the threaded inserts. The laser pointer is not necessary for the operation of the robot, but it helps a lot to correctly center the camera and to know where it is aiming before shooting. This is the camera I initially installed but it turned out to have too wide a field of view for this application, so you will see I ended up replacing it with another one. I needed some kind of plate to hold both the moving part of the robot and the water system part, so I decided to use my Niji laser again to make it. After an initial test with MDF, I made the final piece with a sheet of black methacrylate. This is where you attach the tripod the robot, and the water bottle. The first test consisted of shooting manually to see how the water jet came out. Well, first just with air, and then with water. I made an excellent humidifier. Adjusting the nozzle greatly improved the jet but honestly, I was not very satisfied with it. Also, some of the water fell on the camera, so I had to design a protector to absorb the drops. I designed a simple GUI using Python. This allows you to manually move the robot at different speeds, turn on the laser, and shoot. Now, taking advantage of my insane drawing skills, I am going to explain how it works. Imagine that there is a table on which the cat is not allowed to jump. In this case, it is small, but it could be a very long area, like a kitchen counter. The robot has a limited field of vision, but it will move in search of the cat. Something similar to what Soldier did in this old game. I see. That way, I can control a much larger area of the room. The restricted area must have been previously defined by manually creating points, which end up forming a coordinate polygon within the program. Once activated, the robot will search for a cat in the video feed. That is a CPU intensive task. The fan usually turns on to try to cool it down. This activates the automatic mode. Whatever you say, officer. If while doing the surveillance route, it detects a cat, it will target her and follow her wherever she goes. 
checking at every moment that she is in a permitted place. If so, it won't fire. Here you can see how it follows her and aims at her, but it does not shoot. On the other hand, if the cat enters the prohibited area, the robot will shoot at her until she leaves it. It aims at her, but it does not shoot. When she enters the forbidden zone, it shoots her. I leave a margin above the table to detect the cat's head. You may have noticed that the last shots are cleaner and more precise than this one. I thought about trying a 3D printer nozzle and what a change, much better. I made a bushing to fix some leaks and that's how I got rid of the garden humidifier definitively. Recording the actual test wasn't easy. Cats may look dumb, but they are really smart. It took very few shots for them to understand that if they got on the table, they were going to be shot, which meant that I had very few opportunities to record it. My brother prepared his lunch as bait and left it on the table. After a few scares, I think I could have replaced the robot with a fake one and it would have worked the same. In fact, in the end, they didn't want to be on the table even if my brother invited them up. If you notice, it detects the cat and aims at her, but it does not shoot. They eventually discovered a huge vulnerability in the system and took advantage of it. What happens if they don't show their face to the camera? How would you solve this? You can leave a comment below or send me a DM on Instagram, where I am uploading the evolution of my ongoing projects. Thanks again PCBWay for supporting this project. They are not only a top quality PCB manufacturer, with a wide range of options available, but they are also a CNC machining and 3D printing service, which makes PCBWay an all-around solution for the maker. You can check their latest discounts in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.